Python window is quite a powerful functionality within any GIS. QGIS and Arc both use Python for their scripting. How you access it, you simply just open it by pressing the correct icon to access the Python window. If you press F1 at any time, a help will pop up. In this example, or in this exercise, we'll be using the Python window to do some uh, geoprocessing, some geospatial analyses. So in this case, you're looking for a particular farm that has certain characteristics, certain area, certain price, has have a borehole, etc. All of this can be done directly from the Python. Once you're in the window, you should always import ArcPy. This is not absolutely necessary, but it's good practice to do it anyway. As you can see in the window, you have on the left hand side where you put in your where you type, and the right hand side is your help functionality. One of the first things you should do is you should set your environmental settings. For example, your geoprocessing options should always be set to overwrites because then you don't have to rename all the time. You can activate this by saying ArcPy. Full stop pulls up functionality within that. For example, in the full stop. And then I would like to be able to overwrite output. I want to do it, so I would say true and say enter. You can also add your output to, map, to your view, to your map directly. And um, it again is part of your environmental settings. So you would say outputs to map. And again, because you want it to be true or you want it to happen, it's a Boolean function, you say true. Also set your workspace. So in this case, again, it's an ArcPy function. It's an environmental setting. And you can say workspace equals, and this is where you can simply drag in. For example, let's say my workspace is within one of my folders. In this case, my root folder is the practical folder. So if I say practical one, then this will be my workspace, and everything will automatically be set to that. And if I say enter, the software automatically assigns that particular folder as my default workspace, as the geodatabase, my default geodatabase. So let's say now I want to, for example, reproject a layer. So I'd like to buffer the roads, but before I can do that, I'd like to reproject a layer because that is just good practice. So the way to do that is you would like to call up the reproject tool. So you can find out what that is by just looking at, because you know it's called reproject, see, anyth see if anything comes up, nothing happens, so maybe project, and you can see project management. So the underscore, the last one, just tells you where it is in your toolboxes. So if you would call open up your toolboxes, you'd see that data management tools has the projection and transformations and there's my project tool. So what you could do is you can pull it up directly from ArcPy or you can just drag the tool in and it will tell you what to do. So in this instance, if I would like to project my rivers to come up, or my roads rather, I will just select it and say tab and comma. And as you go through the tool on the right hand side in your help menu, you'll see that the highlighted section is what, what you must decide on now. So now it says our data set, so I'm going to say roads project. Your input should always be a string, so it must be in case in quotation marks, either single or double. It doesn't really matter, either one. And then I want to project it into my coordinate system. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. And the easiest way to just get that information is really from a Python script that you've run before or maybe from a model. So how you can do that is you can just put it in and close the brackets and run it from there. And the tool will run and execute and let you know if it's working or not in the right view window that you have. Another way 
to do this would be to actually store the projection information in a variable that will so you can reuse it in that sense and you don't have to copy and paste your information in all the time it's a little bit more efficient so here we are the tool has run successfully after 0.25 seconds apparently and there it is so world project is now uh, the output file but just to illustrate how we can use a variable so let's say I'm going to call my variable projection I'm going to assign it the projection coordinate system so if I would now like to again project a particular file let's say I would like to project the borehole information and as you can see on the right hand side the help function it tells you where you are in the syntax of the the tool so ball, ball hole projects you don't have to now paste all that information in again um, for your interest this is UTM zone 35 south based on WGS 84 um, what you can just do is just call up the variable and because you've defined it before it will be it will be an option of input so the moment it comes up just hit tab and you close and you can run the tool again and it will project your boreholes into that particular projection let's say now that you would like to buffer one of these files so you would call up the buffer analysis tool and here so the in features is the first one if they're not in your screen you can just simply add them in for example here's borehole project and rows project so let's say now I would like to buffer the boreholes by 20 meters. So you call up the tool, open the brackets, and you would like to buffer the boreholes and give it a suitable name for example borehole buffer as long as you have the same quotation marks you can use singles or doubles it doesn't really matter buffer distance for example 50 meters and then you have various other options as you see in the right window cursive brackets mean that this is an optional input it's not a necessity because it's an optional one you can either just say quotation marks comma and it skips it or if all of them are optional just simply close the brackets and run the tool and that's all you'll have to do for that another thing that you can consider is that sometimes you want to actually have multiple inputs to a tool so in this case let's say I would like to do a batch projection or I would like to do an intersection so let's say I'm going to want to do an intersection of my buffer that I just did with my Avon. So the, the outline of the boundaries and I can do intersect and just look at the for the tool that I'm looking for. And as you can see here on the right hand side, it says in features, semicolon in features. That means there are, you can have multiple inputs to this tool. So how you can do that is you can either click on the individual layers in your table of content and drag them in and the, the software will format it for you as you can see here because it's a text string it's actually encased in square brackets meaning that you don't have to um, put in a, the, a double quotation marks around them but if it wasn't the case for example you would uh, drag them in individually so boho buffer you'd have to separate by semicolon and then you pull in the other layer and all of that has to be in double quotation marks and then single quotation marks otherwise it won't read as a string so if you say comma and then you just give it an output name intersect and then again we just have um, optional input so you can just ignore it and say run now here you can see that we have an error in the code the window will tell you if there is an error. Now here it says passing error, syntax error, so it means you've made a mistake in entry. How we get back to that? Just go with your error up. And you can see I have not actually done this correctly. 
So I have my input la layers here for Hobotla and the Alvin and Comma, and then I go to the output layer, but I haven't actually closed the input line. So here we are, where I just added my extra quotation mark, and now I can run it, and that will then run my tool and execute successfully. So this is just a short overview of the Python window. You can, while you're running your tools, you can also add in comments, for example, this was an exercise in the Python window. As long as you put the hashtag in front of it, you won't execute the code. So this is a way for you to keep track of where you are. If you right click in it, you can also save this input as a Python file or a text file. For example, call this a text, a tester. If you then go to that particular file and you open it up, you can actually clean up your code and uh, add additional inputs that you would like or uh, illustrative and annotations that you might need.